I will look unto the hills from where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord of heaven and earth. And he is our Lord today. I hope he's your Lord as we bring you into hope today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Good to have you. Good to be with you, sir. Yeah. You're looking wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, well, we've got a great show for you. There's a lot going on and a lot we want to share with you. Pastor Jay, let them know what's coming up in just a minute. Yes, very excited. We've got a local pastor that's here and uh, Pastor Jarrell Gilliam. Some of you may know who he is, along with his mother, Alma Gilliam, who is the mother of the former NBA player, Armin Hammer Gilliam. And she's here with her son, Jarrell. And it's just going to be a phenomenal time. It is. It's going to be a phenomenal time. A great story. We just want you to know that we are always here for you. There are prayer partners available to pray for you. So be sure to call that number and get some prayer today. You know, whatever you're going through, God got, has got that help. The way I started the, the, the program, he's got help for you today, no matter what it is. So be sure to do that while we hear that, the, the story of Alma. Yes, yes, so excited uh, to have with us today, uh, Pastor Jarrell and his mother Alma. They're gonna be sharing from her book, Journey of Faith, Challenges and Courage. They've been through all sorts of things and they've got a message of hope and encouragement that God can bring you through anything that you're walking through today. Pastor Jarrell and Alma, so good to have you both on Hope Today. Thank you, just a blessing to be here. Thank you. Well, listen, y'all are a phenomenal family. Uh, Pittsburgh, you're no stranger to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely not a stranger to trials and tribulations. Uh, you know, I, this book was outstanding. Uh, it's an easy read, but it's packed with a lot of faith. But you've, you're not a stranger to trials and tribulations, even going way back dealing with racism. How has racism impacted your life? Well, even as a child, uh, I was impacted by racism. I was born in Bessemer, Alabama, and we would go down and visit in Bessemer, Alabama, and you would see on the side of the road, it said, white only. You can only drink out the fountains where it said white only. Wow. You could only go to the bathroom where it said, I mean, white only. And that impacted me even as a child. And so that's, I began to think about how, even as a young person, is there somehow that we can change that? What makes me different? Mm -hmm. You know, why can't we both drink out of the same fountain? Mm -hmm. God made, created us both, why? What's the difference here? And I was always impacted by that. Mm. You know, Pastor Jarrell, you had said something a little bit ago, which I'm going to direct this to your mother, but um, how nowadays there's so much vitriol going on in the world with racism. We see with the election that's coming up and everything that's been happening. But you posed a question or actually a statement. How did you um, deal with it using your faith? Because you, you, you didn't respond. Nowadays, people are willing to shoot you, cut you, cuss you out, all those types of things. That's how people handle their problems. Mm -hmm. But you used faith and love in order to do that. How did that work for you? Yes, but in the beginning, I wasn't saved, so I didn't use faith. Mm -hmm. You okay. know, it, was, it, it wasn't faith. But as I became a born-again believer and began to trust God, then I, I knew how to deal with these issues because the wisdom that the Lord gives us as believers. And how, how do you deal with that now? Uh, what would you tell somebody now that's dealing? Because you dealt with it even with your son, mm -hmm. uh, Armin, uh, who had dealt with racism and not getting playing time. Mm -hmm. He was the best player coming out of Bethel Park. And yeah, you even had Park. to do uh, different types of uh, community, what was it, uh, community uh, yeah, uh, like meetings? A Community meetings, yeah, they would come up and support him and we're trying to get the, uh, the, the coach to give him equal playing time, but they were uh, refusing uh, to do that. Um, but they, they had a foundation of faith that gave them the ability to just keep pushing forward. Amen, amen. Yes. So how did you deal with that then? I mean, because it seemed like you'd become angry, you'd yes. be frustrated. I had different emotions. Uh, I became frustrated, I became angry, uh, uh, but these things you have to actually learn how to deal with them. Uh, and it was, it was just quite, uh, 
I, I, let me see how to, it was just quite a experience trying to train yourself and you want to do the right thing, but at the same time, you got a, a war going on, you know, mm -hmm. how do you deal with these things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I want to back up just a minute here because I have a, how did you meet the Lord? You said you didn't know the Lord uh, at first. How did I meet the Lord? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me tell you how I met the Lord. <laughs> My husband and I belong to a little small church in Bethel Park, mm -hmm. Bethel Baptist Church. And my husband uh, was a deacon, he was a trustee, he was, he was an active member in the church. And I played the piano. And so they had a visiting minister come at a revival, a Pastor Tinker. And my husband knew Pastor Tinker down through the years and he said, now, that's Pastor Tinker, but it don't sound like him because Pastor Tinker was a rough guy. But anyway, he gave the invitation for anybody who want to accept the Lord, come forward. Now I'm playing just as I am on the piano. Um, a, a good, good church member. My husband selling chicken dinners and just a good <laughs> worker. And I'm playing just as I am on the piano. And he went up for prayer. And I said, well, perchance, he didn't hear what the pastor said. He said, anybody who want to accept the Lord, come up. I said, now we're already Christians. People here already know us as Christians. And I'm sitting there fuming. I should have been happy. I'm sitting there fuming. And, and he went up and uh, the pastor had him to go through the, the prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, accept me in your heart. And he went through the prayer. And then afterwards, now, I'm, I'm really upset. And he was, uh, when he left church, we lived up the street from the church. And so he, uh, it, it was amazing because the light shone on him. He, he had a, a, a great experience when he accepted the Lord. So he went up to the house. We live up the street. And he went in the house the same night, right after the service, and he began to pour out his whiskey, wow. his wine, his, his beer, and... That wasn't so bad, but then we had what you call records then, mm -hmm. and he threw out his old records, <laughs> and, 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 and then the thing that upset me, he threw out mine. I used to love this song, <laughs> Fat Domino. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill, <laughs> and I was upset, and I told him, I said, now look, this don't make no kind of sense. You don't have to do all this to serve the Lord, and I was upset. I knew he loved me though. And so I waited till the next morning. And so I went upstairs. I'm mad now. And I said, Jim, <laughs> I knew he loved me. I said, now you taking this thing entirely too far. You don't have to do all this to be a Christian. We've been a Christian all our lives. And you're down there embarrassing me at the church. And I, I said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We only had the one son. I said, I'm going to go and live with my mom and take my son. I knew, I knew he loved me, you know. And I said, I'm going to go there. And I was working at McGee Hospital. I had my own private office, the first black. And I, and I made more money than he did. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so that's what I'm going to do. And I knew he was going to, I knew he loved me, so I knew he was going to give in. So what he did, he went upstairs and started praying. Mm called all over Pittsburgh, <laughs> called Cornerstone, everybody <laughs> to pray for his unsaved wife. Wow. That wow. was me. Wow. And so then I found out going to church and these kind of things and good work don't give you a personal relationship right. with Christ. Right. Right. And with everybody praying for me all over the world, I had no choice but to ask the Lord in my heart. And the first time, the pastor never said anything about you must be born again. Wow. Why don't so the you pastor? Were, you were serving in the church, playing the oh, piano, but weren't a Christian. Oh, I'm doing it all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good member. Good member. <laughs> wow. But, but, not, but not born again. Yeah, not not born, born again. Wow. Yeah. And this is something that we have to be care careful of. It's not works. It's not attending church. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's how you, that's how I got born again. That's how I got born again. Wow, that's an outstanding story, you know. And how important was that? Because I want to fast forward a little bit. 
to the loss of your son and your husband. Uh, how did your faith get you through that time? Because that was, I mean, your son played in the NBA for 13 years. He's probably the picture perfect mm -hmm. person when it comes to health. Mm -hmm. And then to suddenly get the news that he had passed, how was your relationship now with Christ yes. bring you to where that you need to be? That is the only thing that got me through it uh, was my faith. Uh, I guess you really, to experience a sudden loss. Yeah. Now, when a person's been sick a long time, you can kind of expect maybe. Right. But when a person dies suddenly, it's, it's hard to explain yeah. the heartache, and especially when it's your child. Now, my husband, I loved him dearly. He was a true man of God. His death was different than my son. I can't explain why, but it was the faith. It was, it's hard to explain because my heart was totally broken, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit was comforting me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, I guess it's kind of hard to explain the two going on at the same time, but that's what happened and that's how I got through it because the presence of the Holy Spirit just kind of carried me mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. That's how I got through it. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it's, it's something we didn't sign up for. We didn't know that, that you didn't know that kind of thing was gonna That's be right. a challenge for you. That's right. But God carries us through those times, doesn't he? In ways that we, we don't know until we get there, how know. strong his help is. Amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jarrell, how did you also get through that time? I mean, your loss of your brother, I'm sure you guys were very close, you were close in age. Yes. Uh, yes. And also then the loss of your father, how did your faith and your experiences bring you through that time? Well, as you were saying, um, you know, we are living life. We had just been with, uh, with Armin the day before, so things were, were going well. I was actually involved in something on the north side that day, that evening. And, um, and then we, uh, we, we got this call that he was in the hospital. So we go to, go to, to visit him. And by the time I arrived there, he had already uh, passed. But, but because of our faith, um, our initial response was to pray for him. <laughs> and yeah, uh, we, we asked for some privacy in the room and uh, some may not understand it, but we stood around him and we, we prayed for, for God to raise him up. We just believed that God was able to do that. And there was a point after some time of pressing in that we felt this release that God was saying that, um, that, that he, was, he was now in heaven and, and we began to move on. But in that moment, uh, what got us through was knowing all of the years of faith that my parents had given to us, all of the years of watching them deal with all of the various adversities that they had dealt with, they would always go back to the word of God that would always go back to the fact that the word of God is our foundation and that God is with us, even when things don't make sense, even when things are painful or hurtful. So that's where we went. It was in prayer. We wanted to pray for each other. We continued to ask for prayer and we could feel that prayer carry us. And so that's a message I like to call attention to for everyone, that prayer is real, prayer works. Uh, and prayer changes things. It changes the atmosphere and it brings healing to us. And it was uh, really something because being a, a born again believer and trusting in the Lord, and I taught Bible study. I spoke at a lot of places, Women Day and so forth. And I'm telling believers how are you supposed to deal with adversity in your life? But it's a little different when it actually happened yeah. to you. Amen. Now, are you going to apply the word? that you know or yeah. so it is really a test of your faith and so that's what was really uh something hard you know now i've taught people now when adversity happens this is what you're supposed to do and uh, it was it was something that we have to learn and we have to trust mm -hmm. amen amen so how is it now? How is the Lord, your relationship with God? He's brought you through these things. That doesn't mean oh that memory is, is any yeah. easier, yeah. but what's that relationship like right now? Oh my, once you go through adversities, once you go through hardship, uh, once you experience these things, 
you grow closer to the Lord. Uh, sometimes his presence is just overwhelming. Um, it's hard to explain, it's hard to explain, but it is a big difference once you go through these things. And that's why I always like to emphasize to other born again believers, we don't always understand God ways. And, and we, do we have the right to question God? That's what I asked myself, because I did question him. For sure. And I said, Lord, now, why this happened? You know, in Armin, he helped people. He, he, he was just, why? I did question the Lord. And, but then I had to learn that we have to trust God's wisdom. That's right. His wisdom, not our understanding. And so that's what, you know, got me through. Wow. You know, something I, I would add to how it is now is that she is a model of faith for so many people. And uh, it's not uncommon for me to come up to meet someone and they, and they introduce themselves as my, as my brother or my sister. I've never met them before, <laughs> but I just know that meant at some point they've met my mom and, and my mom has been adopted by so many people. And again, throughout her life, they dealt with adversity, racism, all these different things, but they dealt with it in love. And she ended up um, loving these young people um, in the middle of the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, all these turbulent times because of Christ in her life. And now I have brothers and sisters that I don't even know of uh, because of, because of her, her testimony. And so, yeah. Well, you know, we so appreciate you, you both, and we thank you for your wonderful book here, Journey of Faith, Challenges and Courage. Ladies and gentlemen, you can grab that on Amazon. But before we let you go, we've got about a minute left. I want you just to look into that camera I'm right there <laughs> and just encourage somebody that's going through difficult times, mm -hmm. going through hard times, trials, and tribulations. What would you tell them to encourage yes, them to make it through? Yes, yes. Uh, Things that you are experiencing if you're going through hard times. And what I would advise you to do, lean on the Lord. Number one, the Lord loves you. And we don't have to understand all his ways, but we have to trust his wisdom. And he will get you through it like he got me through it. And even though it might hurt now, but you'll see in the long run that God was with you all the time. So just place your trust in him and he will perfect that concerning you. Thank you so much for your words, Sister you. Alma. We so Thanks appreciate you. Pastor Jarrell, so great to have you. You're a frequent flyer here. You're always <laughs> welcome to, welcome to come back at any time. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back in just a minute. In about 60 seconds, Tom and I are going to be discussing some new and exciting things coming up. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Well, those of you that have been with us for a long time, you've enjoyed Hope Today. And, you know, uh, I'm here again with Pastor Jay. Jay, you remember we can't, we're coming out of that coronavirus time. Yeah. Actually, we're yeah. heading right into it. Yep. And, and we, had a, we started a program because we were doing real life back then. And we started a program called Coronavirus Hope for Today. You remember that? I do. And, I do. and Sydney would come on and, yep. uh, and, and she would report from a God perspective 
everything that was happening because we were hearing so much and so much was going on and we were, we were like, we need hope and we need to get the God perspective in this. Yeah, I do remember that, and uh, that was a uh, difficult time for all of us. I'm sure you all remember that. And, and, you know, one thing I'm so appreciative about Cornerstone, Tom, is that you guys are always, and we're always on the cutting edge of what's happening in the earth and make sure we have a message that's relevant. During that time, you guys completely morphed everything to make sure that our viewers at home were getting the hope that they need to make it through such a traumatic time. Well, and I think that word morph is a good word because we're about to morph again. You know, we have enjoyed the last four plus years of hope today, seen God do some amazing things, had incredible guests, had a great team here that has, uh, you know, just did so much to, to reach God. What we're gonna do now though, is we're gonna transition again. And, and Hope Today is going to become a new program called Unscripted Faith. We're actually calling it a sequel. You know, everybody's got a sequel now. <laughs> if you watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know there's sequels all the time. Well, we've got a sequel here to Hope Today and it's called Unscripted Faith. And Pastor Jay, you're gonna be real involved in that. I am, I'm excited about it. And it's gonna start Monday, September 9th. It's coming up and uh, Angela Madden will be on yeah. as well with yeah. me and we'll be hosting this together. We're really excited. You know, it's funny, it's called Unscripted Faith and yeah. I like things off the cuff. Yeah, me you know, too. I mean, yeah, <laughs> wherever we go, we're gonna go. And that's what's gonna be, it's gonna be conversations, it's gonna be talks, it's gonna be talking about real life events, uh, but there's not gonna be as much of a scripted feel to it. That's why it's called unscripted yeah. faith. And then in the middle of all these conversations, it's gonna be talking about how God has brought us through those things and the difficulties and the trials and just hearing about people's stories. And it's gonna be a time of entertainment, it's gonna yeah. be a time of enjoyment, and uh, hopefully uh, people will really be blessed by this new message metamorphosis of what's happening uh, here today. I, I, I love the, the idea, and, and this has been shared uh, in, in some of the meetings about this, that we want people at the end of this, that they're gonna feel good about their relationship with God yeah. and about knowing Him and what God is doing in people's lives. And, and I think that's exciting. And uh, so you and Angela, you'll be the main host of this program. I'll still be involved, Amy will still be involved, and various other ones that you've gotten to know and love during the time on Hope Today. Uh, we're going to be involved, but you're going to see these guys every day, Angela and Jay, just kind of sharing from, from their hearts and, and, and opening up the, the, the stories of what God is doing in people's lives. And, you know, you know Jay, it's, it's something that, you know, God, is, God has got a story for each one of us. That's right. There's a story out there. You've got a story. Every one of us have, has a story in God. We want to tell those stories. We want those, those to come out and, and just see what God has done. And we want to see it in a new way. Again, unscripted because I, I didn't sign up for the script that God took me through. You know? yeah, exactly. We were just talking to, Nobody did. to Alma and she yeah. didn't necessarily sign up for the script that God took her through. But God takes us through those scripts and, and brings us out the other side, showing how wonderful he is. You know, it's amazing too, Tom, is that it's unscripted to us, but it's totally scripted to God, yeah. which means everything that we walk through, the provision is already there. The peace that you need, as you heard Alma talking, was already there. Every answer you'll ever need. And what's going to be really cool is just hearing these stories and what's been happening in people's lives. You know, I love documentaries. Yeah. You know, whether it's 30 for 30, when I'm a yeah. sports guy, things along that line. And you get a chance to hear the behind the scenes stuff of what happened in people's lives. You know, so I was watching one recently about Walter Payton yeah. back in the day. And it, it, it's not just that everybody knew what he did on the, the uh, football field, but seeing how he battled cancer and how it impacted his family. That's what Unscripted Faith is more going yeah. behind the scenes. It's kind of yeah. like knowing the story yeah. behind the glory. Yeah, I, I love that. And, you know, we, we all love those, those stories, you know. So um, as Jay said, you know, we're going to see how God has taken behind all that, you know. It, you know, so often you see someone, you see them in a successful ministry, you see them in a, maybe on TV, maybe up front at church, and you think, wow, everything's just going right for them. Everything, they just like were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And that's not the case. Everybody's gone through those times of, uh, of questioning, those times of wondering. But God is a good God and he brings us out the other side. So starting uh, next week uh, on uh, the 9th, uh, Monday, September 9th, 
you're going to see unscripted faith in all those places that you've seen hope today. And so, uh, again, it's not a, a, a leaving behind of hope today. We're always going to need hope. But what we're going to see is uh, this is a transition and, a, and the next step. It's taking us in the next step of our faith with Jesus Christ. And Pastor Jay, so often God said, come on up here to me where I didn't think I belonged or I didn't think, you know, he, I'm like, well, that's not where I'm, uh, I know how I know you, but he always takes us up to that new level. He does. You know, I, that's what I was kind of sensing, even with the, you know, we had real life, real yeah. life 360 back in the yeah, day. I remember, I remember that's that. when I came on yeah. and then morphed into hope today. And now it's time for a new season. Uh, that lets me know that God has brand new things, not only for Cornerstone, but also for you. And I believe this new endeavor is going to take us to heights that we've never been to before. It's just really going to be a great time. But you're right, God takes us from glory to glory. Yeah. And I love the fact that there's going to be more of a talk show feel to it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, enter like I said, entertainment uh, along this, hearing the stories of just inspiration and encouragement. And, uh, you know, when you hear those stories, I don't know how it is for you, but I know for me, I get so excited. Yeah. Like I get motivated when I watch those 30 for 30s yeah. or I watch a documentary about somebody. Yeah. It just encourages me, and that's what we're hoping to bring to you. So it's going to be unscripted. We're going to fly off the cup, but it's going to be wrapped and laced in faith. <laughs> and it's going to be life-changing. That's right. And that's really the, the key is what is the next level for you, the next step for you? God's got that. He's got it for you. He's got it uh, planned. He's going to bring you that way. It's going to seem like Pastor Jay just said unscripted to you. But God is the author behind all those scripts, and he is bringing you to that place. And I just want to, uh, again, say to you, do you know him? Do you have that relationship with him that you can say, hey, I know who I believe in, and I know that he's able to deliver me to the, the next place I need to be? If you don't, then let's take a moment right now, and let's just say, God, come into my life. Open your heart. Open that door of your life to him right now. And, and invite him in and say, God, I want you to be the Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus of my life. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And he will do that and you will see new life. You will see hope, you will see faith, and you will see that new journey that he's taking you on. And it's going to be great. And it's an exciting journey because he's an exciting God. Every day you wake up and say, Lord, what do you have for me today? Because I know you're an amazing God and you're gonna do something amazing in my life. So, you know what? Pray for us and see God, see what God wants to do in this season, in our lives and in yours. Have a great day.